How hard did you push it? Till I black out? Yes. Numerous times, yes. What's happening, municipals? This is your boy, Big C, and your boy, Ash. Then, how are you guys doing? Hope you're doing well. We are talking Diamond Woods tonight, but before, 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 um, we are going to chat a little bit, catch up. I haven't talked to my boy, Ashton, for a minute. How you doing, sir? Oh, how are you? Would you like some more gumbo with that? Like, I don't know what. <laughs> I would love to identify what that what that accent was, but uh, I'm good. But before we begin, uh, I need to formally apologize. Not to you, Chris. I think I've done well by you. Uh, but formally apologize to our friend Brandon, who I punched in the face last night. How the fuck do you punch Brandon in the face? He's like the nicest guy in the world. It wasn't intentional. Uh, and in fact, it's Draymond Green's fault. Because we were talking about some, I do not remember what we were talking about, but I joked that I was Draymond Green, and I stood up quickly with my fist cocked, and Brandon was smiling, and I stood up too quickly, and my knuckle hit Brandon in the in his glasses, and like, I hope he doesn't have a black eye today, but it caught him like right, right kind of by his orbital bone, um, and honestly, Brandon, shout out to Brandon because. I could tell he, like, his reaction was to respond, even though he knew I didn't mean to. Uh, but he kind of took a hold to cool off and was like, and, and we're, we're cool. But um, I bought Brandon a beer afterwards. I gave him a big hug. I felt terrible. Uh, but Brandon, I'm also coming out uh, here and saying I'm sorry because I told Brandon I don't have a list of people I want to punch in the face, to be clear. But if I did, Brandon would be at the absolute bottom of the list. It's like, so, yeah, I'm sorry. He's a, he's a true gem of a man. I mean, nobody would want to punch Brandon in the face. No. No. So, that's it. We don't have to go on any Ugh. further. But, yeah, I, I'd like to apologize. Ugh. And it's also a good, like, I'm sure you, some people are not as clumsy as me, but probably, uh, you know, a good idea to uh, to not even pretend to do that because, yeah, Sometimes you can end up punching a good friend in the face. But shout out to you, Brandon, for not punching me back. Yeah, I would have deserved it, but I'm really thankful you didn't. Because I made the joke that's not actually funny. I knocked my own tooth out with my seven iron on a golf trip with you. So, like, I've done the damage that he could have done. So, Brandon, I'm sorry. But, Chris, things are good. Uh, can't believe we're already into the fall. Trying to soak up some of these. I mean, we don't have much sunlight these days. But, you know, November 6th is the day the calendars flip and afternoon golf becomes impossible. So, and trying to soak up as much of it as I can. Um, but yeah, hanging in there and, and grinding, uh, still grinding with Brad on my driver. Made some incremental progress today. So peck, peck, peck. Yeah, you've probably, this is kind of a switch because this never happens, but you probably played more golf than I have played as of recently. Um, with the baby coming and, and you know, work and, everything going on i just haven't been able to get out and play as much as i want to uh me and uh bean mace a uh, friend of the pod been on a few episodes we played in a two-man scramble over the weekend at wildwood um shout out northwest golf guys travis zach appreciate you guys did you um, fight? we did not get into a fight with 74 year old veteran um this time so that was a good thing didn't didn't see him didn't come around so that i doubt he uh comes out and plays in northwest golf guys events but who knows they they've got a wide range of, of members so you never know who might show up to one of their events but we played well you know we played well uh we ended up shooting a 66 two man scramble so me, me and Bean, we we ham and egged it around that entire course, making it happen. You know, Bean was draining putts. I didn't have to putt half the round. It was fantastic. Um, we took probably eighty percent of my drives, but you know, Bean Bean came in clutch on on times where he needed to come in clutch. But crazy thing is, we still lost by I don't know eight strokes. 
there was a team of two scratch golfers that were out there that shot 17 under. Yeah. Verified by their playing partners, they were on six different greens for Eagle. I mean, just, sure, that course is short, but still, that's nuts. Nuts. Absolutely crazy. So, I mean, they had, and the one thing about Wildwood is the greens are tiny. So, for you to be able to hit a 230, 240 yard shot on some of those par fives to get on the green, like, Jesus. Like, I, I just couldn't imagine being the playing partners and ended up playing with them, knowing that, like, you were guaranteed not to win. Like, it's just crazy. But we had great playing partners, played in four and a half hours, probably the fastest uh, Northwest Golf Guys event I, I've played. I think, to be honest, the two-man scramble was a super great, um, you know, format for, for their turn because, you know, I, I love Travis Scott. They or Travis and Zach. Um, Travis Scott. I don't know where that came from. You know, Travis Scott. Um, <laughs> um, they throw great events. They put on great tournaments. They have massive turnouts. I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing. I mean, they just draw they pretty much every crowd, especially the yeah. Northwest. I know. Yeah, it's huge. So they had two full groups go out. Um, one that went off at 7.30 and one that went off at 1.30. And they almost had like two groups per hole going off in a um, shotgun format. It was it was bonkers, um, but played really fast. I think that that format was awesome. I would, I'm hoping next year or more often that they implement more like two man scramble, different formats to get people out there because I I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, but one thing I've kind of been doing on my downtime, you know, when I haven't been able to get out and play, I've been planning a trip for us. So I, I kind of hinted this to you guys. I hinted it to the uh the cookout group that we have going on uh on Instagram. That for 2024, summer 2024, I want to do a nine-day trip all the way down the coast, starting up near Seattle and working our way all the way down to Monterey. And so I went out, started planning this guy. I mean, if anybody knows me, this is like one of my favorite like hobbies to do is to plan golf trips. When, when I'm feeling down that I haven't been able to get out and play or see the boys, I plan golf trips. So, started planning this trip. So, all the boys will fly in to Seattle. We are going to start off with a fucking bang. And we are going straight to Chambers Bay. So, you guys will all fly in on a Friday night. We're going to play Chambers Bay first thing in the morning. You know, 7 a.m. tea time. Out there. Getting it. It's... It's going to just absolutely launch this trip because none of you guys have ever played Chambers. Most of you probably won't get up here to play it before this trip. So this will be kind of a first experience for you guys. And a lot of the guys that will probably be going on this trip will probably end up going to Bandon on the trip that you planned. And so the great thing with that is I personally think Chambers – is a better course than every course at Bandon Dunes. Personally, I don't care if you like my take or not, you can go fuck yourself, but I love cha myself some Chambers Bay. Um, and so I'm really excited for you guys to experience that. Because I'm not making it fun of you, but haven't you only played like two of the five courses at Bandon? No, I have played four of the five courses. Trails is the only course I haven't played. Okay. Because I thought yeah. I thought you were coming back because I knew I knew obviously okay no, you played sheep in regular abandoned with me and you played sheep before but I was like yeah if you say that you haven't played all the court I like, went down I went down a third time without without you after we moved up here in Portland and I played um, oceans and old Mac or I mean dunes and old Mac so the only okay. course I haven't played is trails. So, 
but I've also only got one look at it. I've played Chambers three times, so yeah. I've gotten to play that a lot more. Then we're going to kind of start heading, you know, go around the sound um, towards the bottom section of it. We're going to go to Shallish Cliffs, which is an immaculate, immaculate golf course. I mean, it, it's kind of like how we describe Terra Rahata down in SoCal. It's like a video game golf course, but at the caliber of like a Monterey golf course um, with the conditions, it's like impeccable every time I've played it. And then we're going to head down. We're going to play. I know we're a public golf, golf podcast, but hey, we get the invite to some some crazy cool country clubs. We're not going to turn it down. So we're going to play Astoria Country Club and Highlands one of the, you know, coolest nine hole munis that you'll ever play. Um, and we're going to do 27 there. And then the next day we're going to do Gerhardt Manzanita, which is going to be awesome because none of you guys have ever played Gerhardt. That's going to be an awesome place for you guys, all the experience. And then we're going to keep driving down the coast. We're going to go play Ocean Dunes um, and Florence Golf Links. I, I'm really excited. Me and you were going to play Florence. We kind of ran out of time. So we skipped Florence and made our way to Portland when we did our abandoned trip. But Florence is sick. Reese Jones track. Any of you Bay Area folk that are, might come on this trip or be on the Oregon coast, any of our listeners, you should check out Florence links if you really love Karika Park. Um, it's kind of like an ocean, you know, it's not oceanfront. Don't don't get that twisted. It's actually on the inner side of I-5, or I mean, of one coming all the way down the coast. But it's just a beautiful, immaculately designed, you know, link style golf track. I mean, I really, really love it. Um, and then after that, we're going to head down into abandoned dunes territory so we're gonna stop in see our boy andre play some coos golf club play some sunset bay which is supposed to be this really cool 12 hole track which is just um west of coos never played any course outside of nine or 18 um it's also supposed to be this you know course designed by an apprentice phallus from McKenzie. It's supposed to be just a really cool design. Andre's told me about it. Um, some of the people that I know that are banding caddies have told me about it that anytime I'm in the area, I gotta check it out. So we're gonna try to try to get that in as well. And then this is gonna kill anybody on the trip. Um, just for time. If we're in the area, we're gonna hit one of them, but we're not gonna be able to hit them all. Uh, we're going to hit one Bandon Dunes course. We're going to play um, uh, Pack Dunes, which is probably the most picturesque of all the golf courses. I mean, the most oceanfront views, the most spectacular golf hole, in my opinion. That's like the cream of the crop out there when, you, when you're yeah. trying to like get one in. Yeah, and like ratings don't matter a ton, but like that is the highest rated too. The only thing I would say is like, you know, you haven't played trails, so like, Trails, trails could give you that juxtaposition with um, with chambers, but no, I, I think packs. I mean, that would be when when I go next year. I mean, that's the one I'm most excited to like see, right? Like yeah. just to to like pl like play, yes, but more of like see experience what that place is like. Yeah, that's that's going to be a really good one for everybody to experience that hasn't gotten out there to experience um, that yet, and then we're gonna try to get banding crossings in as well see how people are are feeling maybe we'll do two banding dunes courses and skip banding crossings but i've heard it's dan hickson's first full design it's supposed to be really good so i've always wanted to play it but i've always skipped it every time i've gone down to banden then we're gonna kind of head south right around the oregon border um there is this golf resort called salmon run Heard nothing but good things, never been out there, kind of in its own world, just kind of plopped out in the middle of nowhere. So I think that's going to be a cool one that we all kind of get to experience. It could be good. It could be bad. We have no clue. 
from the ratings and everything that I've seen, it's supposed to be a great golf course. So things going to be fun. Then we're going to head further down. There's, I've talked about this in the pod in the past. Um, there's this course called Benbo. It's an RV park and it's a nine hole golf course. And they have this old like Victorian style hotel that sits just outside the RV park and it's absolutely beautiful. And if you stay there, you get to play the course for eight bucks. And so we're going to go, um, probably that'll be a place where when we finish playing up at salmon run, we'll stay the night at Benbow, wake up in the morning, kick nine holes out. And then we're going to head down to sea ranch. It's one of those courses that are on the California coast that I've just never gone that far up the coast to be able to reach and play. So thought it'd be a great time to kind of go up there and, and experience that track. Then of course, if we're in the area, we're not skipping Northwood. So we're going to, we're going to cut in, we're going to play nine holes at Northwood. I that can be a little bit of a stretch trying to get Sea Ranch and Northwood in in one day, just because it's a little bit of a drive between the two of them. But I'm hoping we can do that in one day. Um, and then we'll probably figure out somewhere to stay kind of in the Bay or in San Francisco. Um, if it's some of us stay at your place and the rest of us get a hotel, you know, we'll figure that out. But I think we'd stay one night. Uh, in San Francisco, have a good dinner and everything. And then we would get on one, drive down the bay, play Seascape and Pajaro Valley, which are just south of Santa Cruz, um, right between Monterey and Santa Cruz. I've heard nothing but great things again. Um, shout out Brandon. Um, he's a He's one of the guys that have told me great things about Seascape. Um, hopefully his black eye will be healed up by this yeah, trip. And, and he can take a punch and not, uh, you know, an accidental punch and not punch you back. So like, yeah. we, we know he's a reliable narrator. We know, we know he's good to have in the car forever because you never know what's going to ha- happen in those, in those cars for this long. I, I, I'm like a giant, like six year old. Like I punch myself in the face with a golf club. I accidentally punch Brandon. Like I'm, I'm a mess. Like, literally, this is not about my golf lesson, but legitimately, like, Brad told me that I'm hitting snap hooks because I think the terminology is he said I have, like, fancy feet. He was like, it's your front foot. He was like, what is going on with your front foot? And I'm like, I don't know. It's what I've always done. So, again, I'm sorry, Brandon. I, I just got to control my limbs. 30 years, and I still can't control my control limbs. Control all the limbs. Can't but the trip, the crescendo is going to end at monterey we are going to kick in that those that those dollars those ducats we're going to play pebble beach we're going to play poppy hills and quail lodge are going to be the three courses that we're going to play well the trip's going to get way more expensive because zach told me that starting next year I think you have to have a two-night minimum at pebble beach to get a reservation so we'll figure that that back are they, yeah, I know but they took that away for the longest members, time. Like yeah, gonna, there might be a way around it. We'll we'll figure that out, and that can always be replaced. But I'm with you. But... I mean, it's it's feeling like the time to rip the bandit off and say like that. Because have you played there? Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. I take that back. I have played there. I played there in COVID um, when they weren't doing the two night minimum because they couldn't. They couldn't have anybody stay in the hotel, so they were yes. offering two hundred and fifty dollar rounds at Pebble and Spyglass. And so I went out there and played both of them during COVID um, in one day and got got in Spyglass and Pebble. Did you ever I, have a better one day of golf? Like, holy oh, cow. I mean, the, the one thing with Pebble is, you know, the holes that you see on TV and the holes that that they're well known for are absolutely spectacular but one third of the golf course is very boring. I mean, it, it didn't excite me on probably like five of the holes. I was kind of just like, eh, eh. Like, I mean, and then probably three or four were like, oh, oh, these are intriguing. And then the rest of them were like, holy fucking shit. Like, you're not going to experience this anywhere. Like, this is 
this is unreal. Like golf holes shouldn't be here. And so it, it's a little mix of all of that. I would say all together, it's an incredible experience. If you ever can play Pebble, it's 100% worth it. But I thought Spyglass was 10 times better of a course from start to finish. Not even close. But yeah, Pebble's just I, one of those places you got to play at least once. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just getting at that tee shot in 18, like I've had – Many a drink over there kind of looking at, you know, at, at 18 green, but it's going to be a lot different when you're actually standing there and, and playing and competing. And yeah, I, I, I mean, what a, it, it's a long ways away. Uh, Frankie will already be a, a, a year and change, but it sounds like a, a wonderful trip and, and also cool. I mean, I think it's also fun because depending on who comes, there's only one flight involved, right? Like you have to fly home, we have to fly up, but like, I kind of love that like symmetry of like our two crews. It's sort of like, oh, there's only one flight and then driving in between. That's, that was the whole goal of this is to have the guys from California have to fly up. And then when they get back down to the Bay, they're at home. We can drop them all off after on our way back from Monterey, not an issue. Yeah. Um, Hopefully everybody will just like carpool and leave a couple cars at an airport. We could just drop everybody off in one spot. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think the main thing is this is just going to be one of those trips nobody's going to forget. And it's something that I want to plan out this far in advance to make sure that we have it all dialed in. Cause I, I for how long it is and what it's going to be, I mean, I bring it out to being about 1500 bucks a person, 1400, 1500 bucks a person with flights. Even with Pebble? Most of the courses are like 60 yeah. to 30. I was going to say, like, this is not meant to drive by shoot the place, but I guess it's like, yeah, my guess is salmon runs, not like charging people up the ass to play. Them. No, like, I mean, the, the big dollars that we're going to see is the one band in round. Uh, the one pebble round and the one round at chambers and that's that's it everything else is how $60 much is chambers? Runner. chambers 190 is that is that true wait do they give you a discount if you're like a washington resident or something or is it just they do. yeah it's like 90 or 100 dollars to play Jeez. if you're a washington resident um and it's like 190 for non-washington residents to play totally worth it totally worth it yeah i mean and and then you know bandon will be about 250 um to play and then um pebble we'll see depending on how we can we can figure that out that's that's where it's going to be and poppy will be expensive for me but it won't be expensive for 90 percent of you guys yeah and if worse comes to worse we sub out well, they won't be done. Never mind. I was able to get set up pasta tempo for Pebble, but again, we'll see. But Chris, yeah. you know, because we're professional podcasters, we should mention um, most of these, actually not most of these courses, but a couple of them, you can play at our title sponsor, Envision Golf, huh? You can. Envision Golf. Home in Tiger, Oregon. One of the best places for simulator golf. Please check it out if you're in the area or if you're coming to the area. Very affordable. You know, thousands of golf courses that you can play at your um, disposal when you go in there. Bar and Grill. Wonderful, wonderful place to go into. They are our title sponsor. Please go in and say the municipal sent you. It is a great place. The people that work there are top notch. We hosted an event out there, me and Ashton, the Municipals event, first one we did a few months back, and it was an incredible time. The people that showed up, you know, down to the staff, you can't say anything bad about Envision Golf. So if you're in the area, if you're in the greater Portland, Pacific Northwest, look up Envision Golf, Tiger, Oregon, drop in, tell them the Municipals sent you. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, obviously I'm not local, but, you know, we're going, as I mentioned, you know, we're going to come into Oregon for Christmas and we'll not be able to play golf because the time of year, but fully anticipate on 
being able to play some golf and vision. Um, and like I said, maybe I'm not the most experienced when it comes to sim to simulators, but um, for, for me as a lefty, um, just really felt kind of seen and taken care of by the setup because normally it's pretty arduous to play as a lefty. Like when I come and see Chris to get even stuff down in a club champion, we have to literally like move the entire setup or at Envision kind of it's all locked and ready. So yes, shout out to them. And yeah, I mean, I don't know how we, how else to convince you. Like the food is great. The people are super nice. Drinks are cold. You're going to have a blast. So go see them. But Chris, tell there. me a little bit oh, about talk before that, oh, oh. before that, Make sure you use code MUNICIPALS. If it's your first time visiting, you get a free round of golf at Envision Golf. Oh wow! Look at that. We're just 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 ham and an egg in the podcast. You're the you're the JT to my speed, or I'll I'll, I'll do it. You can be the speed to my JT. I could be the the thirst bucket. I think I'd rather be the uh, Tom Kim to your Sung Jay. They they seem like a way cooler. Um, a lot more fun of a of a friendship to be a part of. Yeah, the duct tape boy in the thirst bucket. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, shout out to them. Yeah, we're. we're... The question is, who would you be? Would you be Sung Jay or would you be? I definitely would be Sung Jay. I'd be the dude doing doing Gangnam Style after a loss at the President's Cup. Maybe that would Gangnam probably be style. Me. Yeah, sorry. I don't. That's, I don't know what Gangnam Style is, but. <laughs> <laughs> also true also too with the way when you go on your runs you are sung jay where you know like sung jay plays like like what would they say sung jay's played like 50 more rounds than anybody else over the last yeah. like four years like when you go on a heater that that's you it's like where do you live sung jay he's like oh just like hotels like that would be you for sure um but chris we're, we're not gonna make this super long but you recently played um Diamond Woods. Um, tell me a little about Diamond Woods, the architect, kind of some general things. Talk about a couple favorite holes, but just kind of give me the rundown on Diamond Woods. Yeah, so Diamond Woods is down in Monroe, Oregon. Um, so it's down near Eugene, just east of Eugene, or west of Eugene. And so it was designed by a man named Greg Doyle. Um, so Greg has not designed any other golf courses. Uh, he's worked in the, he worked in the golf industry for about 17 years um, and decided he wanted to, you know, open up and operate his own golf course. So he bought a piece of land in Monroe, Oregon, brought his brother out there, showed him, toured him around the land, and they decided to build a golf course. So they went ahead, built their own golf course. To this day, Greg still runs and operates and is the superintendent of diamond woods which i love that story is super cool like i think, think that is so awesome like love that yeah love that i mean you can tell what what i explained to you after when i called you on my way home from from diamond woods was it reminded me a lot of a poor man's pumpkin uh pumpkin ridge so if anybody's gotten the privilege to play the public side of Pumpkin Ridge, it reminds me a lot, a lot of that golf course. And there, there were some parts out there that were a little muddy um, in a very dry season, which didn't make sense to me. The greens were running a little slow, but all in all, the course design layout in most of the, you know, 80% of the conditions were really good out there all day. Um, it's a resort course. They've got a wind. Um, they've actually, my wife's company, Vacasa, actually owns and operates the, uh, the lodge that they rent out for rooms and, and weddings and stuff like that. So thought that was kind of cool. Didn't know that until I saw the Vacasa logo when I was pulling in uh, to the golf course, but decided to play a new course on my birthday. So this was back in September when I played this course and it's been on my list. I just haven't wanted to drive an hour and 15 to go, to go play it. So I decided I was going to try something new, went out there very, very pleased that I played this course. Cause it was $60 with the cart. Um, I played in three hours flat by myself. Um, there were two groups out there. Cool thing is because it's a resort course, they allow like six of them 
and and seven like I think there was a group of seven guys out there playing together and so they everybody was super nice and cordial when they saw me coming up they just like waved me through and kind of like the funny thing was there were it was like old old guys out there and they're like clapping at my shots and stuff like that it was it was a great time good good vibes out there um food and beverage not much to speak of 100 percent. like both their fridges were out of service so they had a ice chest full of Coors Light and all of their Gatorades and water were warm so I just bought a water and pounded a lukewarm water and got a hot dog at the end of the end of the course and the hot dog was oh giving them a giving them a rating and it was a solid four out of ten like very obvious the bun was microwaved um very obvious that that dog's been sitting for a minute like it just it was very lackluster in there in their food and bev um sector and kind of the same way with the pro shop it was one of those pro shops where it's very dated when the course was built in the mid nineties, they haven't really changed it. It's got your basic essential shit, golf gloves, balls, horrible merch that nobody buys that just sits there. It, if you're going to be a resort course, have some better shit. Like that's, that's where I'm going to come at you. Like, Everything else about it, price-wise, um, condition of the course, layout, fantastic. But if you're going to be kind of putting yourself out there as a resort, man, go drive to Running Y and see how they run a resort. Just saying. I mean, you would think that a place like that, they would like think that the fridges would work. That's crazy. It was, was it a yeah. bad day, or did they have an explanation of like, hey, like this broke, or... That's kind of crazy. I didn't really ask. It was kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. okay. I'll just take a water, and I just wanted to get back out there and keep it pushing. Like I didn't want to, yeah, get into a full conversation of why all their shit in their um, <laughs> deli wasn't working. But yeah, I mean, I can't say anything really bad about course. I mean, it well designed for someone that necessarily doesn't design golf courses. Um, it tips Does it have a style? The... Cause I know you said it's resort, but like, is it like C is it uh, target golf? Like, like what's sort of the vibe of like what they're going for from a design perspective? No, it's definitely more parkland. Um, there's a lot of trees out there. Half the course kind of is in a much more like OP open, prairie style like landscape and then you go up into these trees that then you know you kind of get lost up in this like beautiful forest atmosphere up there and so half the holes are tucked up there and then the other half are kind of down in this valley and so it creates a very parkland style golf course and that's why i said if anybody's played pumpkin it's very much like that um to where it's you know tree lined on a lot of holes but then you've got some that open up with some water um and you know great bunkering around the greens that kind of allowed you to have you know risk reward type of shots but didn't really hinder or create you know unfair advantage for anybody of any length like it, the great thing is they had five um, uh, tee markers. So they had five tee boxes, which I thought was amazing. I think more courses should have that range of distances. You can play it from 7,100 basically all the way down to 4,500. And I think that's awesome because it can play to anybody's ability, uh, anybody's length, which I think should be done a lot more. Um, I had a couple favorite holes out there. Um, I would say 18 was probably one of my favorite holes. So 18 is a par five from where I played it, which was 60 close to 6,600. Uh, it plays at 602. So it plays super long. 
Um, but your tee shot is kind of like an elevated tee shot downhill. The fairway dog legs right, but not until you hit it about like 280, 300. Do you, can you reach that dog leg that kind of kicks out right? Um, and then once you get past that corner, it kind of then kicks another, it almost does a full, like, uh, like a full 90 degree turn, but like in 45 degree increments. So you kind of get that corner and then you kind of got a clear shot over the right hand side. If you want to take on the corner to get close as you can to the green, or you can lay up a little bit on the left hand side, be totally fine. Elevated green, bunkers on the right hand side, slopes back to front, a little bit off to the left um, away from the bunkers. So if you do end in the bunkers, you have a very difficult shot onto the green that then slopes away from you. It's just a very well designed hole, you know, and, and I, I was massively impressed. I, I thought someone that was a larger architect, um, no offense to Mr. Doyle, but I was blown away to read right before we got on the pod that this place was designed by, you know, just a guy that's been around golf and has never designed before in his life. I, I think it's incredible. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's also cool that you said that he's, um, it, it, it's the anti, like I was just thinking about this the other day, cause this is the weird stuff that bounces around my head. But, you know, I was thinking about like, a lot of these architects like Jack Nicholas, right? We're like, they're really only involved for like their name or a part of it, right? They've got like a formula, someone else is doing it. This is the antithesis of that, right? Where it's like, do you think this guy cares? I, I think he really does. Like he's all in, he's bought in. And yeah, it's a place, honestly, I kind of like, I would like to prioritize hopefully coming and seeing some point because, you know, I think I've said on the pod before more of like a philosophical thing is like i just don't like apathy like if you like like i just being indifferent to something and um the sort of like buy-in that you've described in this place sounds really really cool yeah you can tell that it's family owned and there's a lot of tender love and care that goes into the maintenance of this course um it, it's shown throughout the entire property and and how it's how it's taken care of and you know, the people that are out there and playing it are really enjoying it. And you could tell there's there's a good amount of locals that really appreciate having it there as well. It's just it's just a great, you know, setup. And, you know, if I'm going to talk about another hole that I thought was super spectacular, um, there was this hole. Uh, so hole number um, hole number three. So it's cool the way this course is laid out there's like two irrigation lakes one on eight and then another one kind of that runs along 16 3 6 and 2 and then there's creeks and kind of like i wouldn't a little bit larger than creeks that run through the course and there's a couple holes that either run along it or kind of cross the creek multiple times and so six is one of those where you have to hit a tee shot over the creek You've got a bunker that separates hole three and six, or I'm sorry, this is hole five. Uh, my apologies, guys. That's There's a bunker that separates three and five from, from the two, and it runs the entire length of the fairway on these two holes. And so it creates this really picturesque tee shot over the river, with the bunkers on the right hand side, beautiful oblong shaped bunker on the left towards the green. Um, five is a very gettable par four. Um, 303 from the um, tee box that I played from. So very scorable. The only thing is, there's not a lot of places to miss on hole five. Like it's tight, real tight. And so you, you kind of gotta gotta pick your shot, hit a good one, and then you've got a great intro into that. Um, there were a few chintzy holes out there, if I'm gonna be 100% honest. Like there were a couple holes that I really didn't, you know, enjoy. And I mean, I think 
most of them were were on the beginning of the back nine. Like I really didn't like eleven. It's this kind of really weird uphill um, par four that just reminded me of my favorite architects. You know, fucking designs. Um, you guys have all heard him. You know who I'm talking about. I don't even need to speak his name. Alex um, McKenzie. <laughs> Oh, Gil but, hands. Yep, that's exactly it. And it, old Tom Morris. <laughs> oh fuck! If old Tom knew he designed this, he would fucking would have killed himself a lot earlier. Um, didn't Tom Morris did not kill himself? Just so you guys know, but he he would have if he designed this hole. It was just, I mean, this is where the amateur architect kind of came into play that you kind of see it it's just a straight uphill par four it just there was nothing involved in there that it was very boring and mundane um but outside of that one and then also 14 was not one of my favorite holes as well you know in in 15 was a great little par three but then 16 was kind of this really boring um boring par four it there was just like a little lull in the middle and then it picked back up so you had this great intro into the golf course and then you had kind of a lull coming on coming after 11 through 14 then it picked back up 15 16 17 18 were all really fun to play so yes i absolutely love diamond woods um I would go back in a heartbeat if I'm going down there or if I don't mind, if I got a day where I can drive an hour and 15 minutes, it's 100% worth it. One thing that happened that I was furious about, I left my Precision Pro on the golf cart, called back the next morning. I knew the golf cart number, everything. They're like, nope, we never found it. Super pissed. Yep. Yep. And also it's so distinct with like the side plate. Like it's got the Icarito side plate on there from the laying up. Like it's very distinctive. I explained it to him and he goes, Oh, well, we've got a precision pro NX nine here. Like that's not my rangefinder. Oh, Christ, um, I didn't know that happened. Yeah. So on your birthday, you lost your rangefinder on your birthday. Yes. Left it on the golf cart, magnetized to the post. I mean, there weren't that many people out there that day. I mean, they had a young cart kid working. I'm 100% sure I know what happened to it. Um, it's in that cart kid's bag, most likely right now. And and so... It happened to me. Don't forget the reserve. Yep. I mean, same thing happened. Like, And that's even a nicer golf course. So, you know, lesson learned. Make sure you check your shit. And make sure you check the cart before you decide to leave the golf course. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you, 90% of the time that I've left anything in a golf course, I've never gotten it back. And yeah. so it sucks. I, because I really you lost your wedge at Rustic Canyon. I gone. actually, it happened, to, it happened to me. It's weird. Rustic it was me. annoying because I lost my wedge, went back two holes later, and it was gone. You just went on this tirade about Californians, and I was like, oh. <laughs> this is so classic. Um, yeah, it, it happened to me in Florida a couple years ago. Like, I left my wedge, and I was like, yeah, it's a lefty wedge. And he was like, oh, lefty. And, he goes, and then he kind of changed his face. He goes, I haven't seen it. And I was like, you, like, how many lefty wedges, you know, pretty sure you know that that was mine. Uh, oh, well. Well, that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I will yeah. say one one of the annoying things is the this is not a precision we're not sponsored. It'd be awesome if Precision Pro wants to come on board. But um, the thing I like about the rechargeable one, the reason I wanted it is it has a Bluetooth and it like alerts you. Uh, but as our buddy Nate pointed out, the problem is is like it doesn't it barely makes it through one round. So eventually it'd be great, or you know, I mean, it would not help with the appeal. But if you could put like an air tag on it or something, but yeah, I mean, the magnets are great, but I hear about people leaving them on the cart all the time. The, the, the way I figured it out, my kind of hack is, 
I take the rangefinder bag and I put it in my shoe bag so that when I go to take my shoes off, I'm like, what's this? Oh, here it is. Like you, I, you can't leave. You put it in the bag. So like you, you're not going to leave without it. Um, cause also if you haven't even left yet and you go back and they haven't found it, like you can start like, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to start tearing through the cart barn. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like it was right here five minutes ago. So that's thanks, buddy. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, can't cry over spilt milk, but it's just, it's just annoying. It's an expensive piece of equipment that now I'm going to have to replace eventually. You know, Luckily I have, month. yeah, I know I, I didn't have it long and that's what drove me crazy about it, but I have a backup. So I'll just go back to that for a while and yeah, not the greatest range finder, but Hey, it'll, it'll do. It's not a precision pro. That's for sure. Yeah. But totally. Diamond Chris, thanks, thanks for sharing that. I'm excited to, like I said, I, I love the give a shit factor. It sounds like it's definitely a place to check out. Yes, sir. Check it out. Anytime you want to come back up, we'll go out there and play it. And again, Diamond Wood, not on your simulator, but go play in Vision Golf. So, yep. uh, Chris, great to talk to you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace.